check. One, two, three. The D. Three. Three. Yeah. This is the D. Three. Go. Your guide to Detroit. Your guide to Detroit's arts Arts and entertainment scene. This is the D. Three. Welcome to The Debrief for the week of March 12th, 2018. How you doing? My name is Seth Ressler. I am your co-host. I am Mike Jeter. Hello, I'm Becky Scarcello. And welcome, Becky. Becky, Becky, mm-hmm. Becky. <laughs> our brand new co-host is here with us, and we've got an exciting show today. We've got Greg Russell. He is our first repeat guest. Friend of the show. Yeah, absolutely great guy. Uh, movie man, Greg Russell. He interviews celebrities. You weren't here last time no, we interviewed him. No, I'm so him. excited to meet oh, him. I've been a fan for he, a while. He is a... He is a He's just a cool dude. He's he just a lot of fun. He is. And and he knows his stuff when it comes to movies. So we'll Perfect. talk to him. We want to talk to him about the Oscars, uh, uh, find out everything that... Uh, you know, he thought about that. Also, sure. Black Panther's obviously huge. Maybe some upcoming stuff. Uh, yeah, and there was some sad news. His brother, Cliff, uh, yes. passed away recently. Yeah. So we'll uh, have him share some memories of his brother as well. Uh, also on today's show, we have Lauren Vickers. She is the director of Who Run the World? Girls. <laughs> that's actually that's actually what it's that about. Was Becky that said that. that <laughs> that's, wasn't uh, yeah, that was a it's a it's about a world in which uh, uh, men have been driven underground and women run the world. It's happening at Planet Ant, which I always think of that was as my a, house growing up. <laughs> that was yeah, with all your, <laughs> ten sisters, man. All your bazillion sisters stayed out of that house. Uh, it's happening at Planet Ant, which I always think of as a, as an improv place, but they do some uh, some original plays as well. So we'll find out from her all about that, and then you talk to a woman this week as well. Right, I Becky? did. Uh, Stephanie Blair Watts, otherwise known as Batty Blair, is the founder of Firehouse Music Series, which is a really incredible situation. I can't wait to um, to talk to her and share the news. All right, we'll find out all about that. Plus, all of the Detroit concerts, comedy, movies, plays, and more. It's coming up in a bit. Stick around. This is the D. Three. Get out of town. All right, I'm not going to lie to you. I'm a little tired because we just rolled those... Uh, when I clocks forward, I guess. Yeah, one hour. Spring uh, forward. Happy daylight savings time. I, I mean, I like it because I like the extra sun. You know, it's actually daylight saving time. Saving. There's yeah, well, no S. Okay, Isn't all right. That, because that, that's I from an old that. Farmer Jack's commercial. Daylight savings, like Farmer Jack savings, savings time. Savings time. Yeah. yeah, that throws me off. And besides, you're in Michigan. You added S to everything. Right. Sure. Yeah, that's Fords. <laughs> Myers, <laughs> Kmart, yeah. Fords. Yeah. yeah. Well, now that there's extra sun, I'm starting to, you know, I'm starting to think ahead. I mean, I, granted, we still had a little bit of snow today. We do. But yeah. I'm starting to think ahead about summer and, and what I need Making to do. Making plans? I'm getting the house ready. Eh? You know, I'm hoping mm-hmm. I can uh, scrape together enough money to put a fire pit in or Ooh, something like that. Barbecue party out back. Nice. Yeah. But just make a fire. Man. I could just do that. Yeah, just, you could sit out there now. Get a magnifying fire. glass and go after the ants. <laughs> right. <laughs> uh, what are the, the big summer things around here? I mean, I'm, I'm kind of a newbie. What are, you know, where do people go and what are, this, what are the things I need to make reservations for? Oh, going up north, man. Yeah, up yeah. north. Gotta and get you're up to north a beach. Trips. So, yeah. so this the is the lakes. This is the, U, when we say up north, UP? No, yeah. dude, no. Up north. Like, what would you consider up north, Becky? Well, anything up along 75, anything north of, say, Claire ish. Yeah. yeah. All right. So like ten, Michigan ten. Wait, mm-hmm. is, like the big Jesus sign? Is that what it is up there? Oh no, that's not oh. far enough. Oh, no, that's no, not farther enough. than that. Way yeah, farther. like Frankenmuth is not up north, no. for instance. But no, no, yeah, no. like yeah. up by Midland, up okay. like you, like Michigan ten, and that's probably two thirds of the way up the state in the Lower Peninsula. And then mm-hmm. once you get up to Traverse City and all that, yeah, yeah then you're up north. Then you're definitely right. up north. Yeah, Charlotte um, boy. So last year I went to Sleeping Bear Dunes. Uh, and we, but I didn't make my reservation early. That's why I'm thinking about it now because we didn't make our reservation early you enough. So, book we, it. so we had to go mm-hmm. in September. So we, I got to book that stuff. Like if you want to go in the summer, yeah, right? especially because it was named like the prettiest place in the U.S. Sleeping, yeah, it was, yeah, it was nice. It was yeah. pretty. Yeah, just don't good. catch a heart attack in the summertime trying to climb up and down those dunes. No, man. I'm not climbing up. and Get down Get yourself nothing. fit. You, you got time. <laughs> you got time. <laughs> And then the other place I always hear about is Cedar Point, which oh, I don't know anything yeah, about. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The Cedar best. Point. The best amusement park. It's not in Michigan, though, but. It's in Ohio, but everyone from Michigan goes there. We really? claim it. Yeah, we, we claim, claim it. it. You, yeah. you, so, like, did you go as a kid? Oh, no. Well, you I, did? I went when I was younger, but not as a kid. I was a young adult. I mean, right. Oh. Yeah, probably in my late teens, early 20s. All right. Uh, and and it's, it's. It's the big deal that everybody sure, says sure. it is. Sure, sure. It's just if you love coasters, you love rides. I I go. do like roller coasters. Are you? 
I used to. I'm, I'm over it, man. I have enough thrills in my life. <laughs> it <laughs> you does, know. you know, your your right. whole like uh, sense of balance and stuff changes as right. you get older. You know, older, paternity so. tests and you know. Uh, <laughs> wait, wait, oh, what? No. Cars breaking down. I have all kinds of thrills. I don't need jury any, duty. No. I'm kidding, people. I'm kidding. <laughs> jury duty, right? <laughs> <laughs> but but they are making some changes this year, right? Yeah, so there's always something new at Cedar Point. Admission is up five dollars this year, so it's up to seventy two. To what? Seventy two dollars for the day. That's a lot. It's worth it. It's worth it. That's there's, like Disneyland. Well, no, Disneyland's like what two hundred, three hundred? Oh, yeah. No, really? Yes, yeah. yes, yes, yes. I haven't been in a while. Yes. But hey, I got a I got an insider debrief uh, life hack for you. All so right. if we you, need a drop in it life hack or something like that. Ooh. So if you if you go online, go online, buy your tickets now for the day pass. You can get the kids price for everybody, even if you're not a kid. Oh. So you can go on to get every day pass ticket for forty five dollars. So that's a big. What kid yeah. has forty five dollars? Their parents. Uh, their parents. Yes. But how I'm much saying, do you pay your daughter allowance? <laughs> How long does she have to save up to save $45? She doesn't. I open up my wallet and she takes $45 yeah. out of it. Mm-hmm. She just gives you the eyes and, you know. That was a debrief live hack. Just... <laughs> yeah, you all heard right. it I'll, here I'll, first. I'll, I'll, I'll get the team on it. All right, stick around. In a few minutes, we're going to talk about the uh, Firehouse Music Series. This is the D, 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 D. Concert calendar. Hey, Becky, let's talk about the concerts that are coming up. Let's do. Uh, Wednesday, March 14th, we've got OMD, Orchestral Maneuvers in the Dark, for the proper name, at the Majestic Theater. Oh, that's If You Leave. That's that, uh, what is it, Breakfast Club? From Breakfast yeah. Club. Yeah. So good. So good. Uh, this is an unusual one. The Morehouse College Glee Club meets Motown at the Second Ebenezer Church in Detroit. So check the Motown Museum website for details on that. Wait, a Glee Club is actually doing the Motown Museum? Mot- well, they're doing Motown hits. Yes. And at a church. Ah. Uh. But I think it's going to be pretty awesome. Uh. On Thursday, March 15th, we have Pigeons Playing Ping Pong at St. Andrew's Hall. Wait, that's the name of a band, right? That's not actual pigeons. It's not actual pigeons. <laughs> I just thought it was really fun to say. <laughs> All the pigeons I know play beer pong. Those silly pigeons. Um, Friday, March 16th, we have the Prince and Michael Jackson experience. This is a DJ dance party <laughs> at L Club. Shamo. On Saturday, March 17th, Santana's playing at Caesars Windsor. And we have another... Uh, PPP, Puddles Pity Party at Royal Oak Music Theater. Yeah, this is the guy from um, America's Got Talent. You've mm-hmm. seen this guy? I, yes. This guy, I, it's incredible voice. Dude can sing. He can sing and he wears a clown outfit. Yeah, yeah. I mean. Check out that video, Royals, uh, from the Lord's uh, Cover. The Lord's Cover. Right. It's, it's a phenomenal. He's incredible. He performs a lot with Postmodern Jukebox, if you know them. So, On Sunday, March 18th, uh, the band Our Last Night at Crow Football Room in Pontiac. And we also have the Michigan Philharmonic is doing Tchaikovsky Spectacular at the First United Methodist Church in Plymouth. And on Tuesday, March 20th, we have Glenn Hansard at Royal Oak Music Theater. So I got some music news for you guys. Just announced Beyonce and Jay-Z on the Run 2 tour. The tickets go on pre-sale this week, uh, Wednesday, uh, the 14th. And they're widely available starting March 19th through Live Nation. The Detroit uh, stop on the tour will be August 13th at Ford Field. I've never seen either of these two. Have you? I've seen Jay-Z and Eminem. Oh, wow. Yeah. I saw show. Jay-Z and rock. Kanye West to the Watch the Throne. Um, yeah, this could be good. So we were talking about MC5 last week. Yeah. Yeah. So right after we talked about them, they must have heard us because the guitarist Wayne Kramer announced that he'll lead the new all-star band called MC50 in a Kick Out the Jams anniversary tour because it's going to be 50 years ago that that album Holy was recorded. Cow. Wow. I feel right? old. I know, right? That's like five years younger than Seth. Yeah. <laughs> And Detroit show is going to be October 27th at the Fillmore, which is just five miles from where that album was recorded at the Grandy Ballroom. Tickets are on sale now, Ticketmaster, so go grab those. Uh, Rob Zombie and Marilyn Manson are going to kick off their summer tour at DTE on July 11th. Not on sale yet, but look for that. 
And last week, the Mopop lineup was released. That's the festival at the end of July at Riverfront Park. Uh, bon Iver and the National are headlining. You got Portugal the Man, St. Vincent, a lot of great bands. Um, Whoa. Really, yeah. it's going to be pretty it's amazing. I yeah. yeah. love St. Vincent, man. $75 for single day tickets and ninety nine fifty for the weekend. All right, stick around. In a few minutes, we're going to take a look at what's going on with sports. Can't get enough. This is the Deep Freak. Subscribe on Apple Podcasts or wherever you find your favorite shows. All right, Becky, you're the big uh, music head around here. Uh, let's, I try. Let's talk about Stephanie Blair Watts, because I know you sat down with her this week. I did. I did. It was really enjoyable to talk to her, and I had found out about this series through a local band that I love and a friend of mine who's a drummer in a band. And so I was really excited to learn more, and, and I didn't realize the scope of it. So, yeah, Stephanie Blair Watts, she's the founder of the Firehouse Music Series. So, of course, at first I asked her, What's this all about? Firehouse Music Series is an online concert. I record it at home. I have invite all my friends who are artists, musicians, bands, rappers, singers, who I've known and um, created relationships with and invite them to uh, record whatever they want. It's important to do that because there's NPR, there's um, KEXP, there's other platforms that record other artists live. Um, so far sounds, um, but there's not any platform that records artists uh, just for the local audience in Detroit. Yeah, that's cool. I mean, she is name checking a lot of the, you know, KEXP and a lot right. of the, the places where you would hear those cool uh, perfor- acoustic performances. Or yeah, live like the Tiny Desk uh, exactly. concerts of NPR, things like that, but really uh, hyper focused on the local musicians. So. Yeah, no, that's nice to see, especially I give know. give Detroit some love here. Absolutely. So then I uh, asked her, so when you're doing these performances, it's it, there's an audience, so anyone can go to these shows. And I asked her, what can we expect to experience there? When you actually come to a Firehouse Music Series, you're going to realize that the artist is intimately in your face. If you really love music and if you really love to be connected to an artist or a band or a rapper or a musician, then you trust a curation of artists that I've already been working with, then you trust that this is really going to be something special. So I always add the element of my mom cooking because it creates an atmosphere of love and taking care of while you're around me and nothing's going to happen to you. You're safe. And um, that's also the point, too. You know, we can enjoy ourselves. We can have a really great time. We can be in an intimate space. We can eat really good food. We can hear good music and we can go home. Um, So I love to record that. I don't know if my mom's cooking would go with uh, the types of music that I listen to. <laughs> hmm. Yeah, just to think about that. <laughs> just my mom's shepherd's pie and, like, you know, Green Day. It's just not. <laughs> <laughs> but how cool, right? Like, yeah. how many of us get a chance to, like, actually be in a recording studio with right. a band? And so it's kind of creating that experience where you get to be a part of this. So. When I used to run radio stations, we would do this. We would do this with, uh, you know, bands. We would go set up a small acoustic intimate setup. And you would, we'd bring listeners in. We'd bring winners who would get to see. And it is really something special to see. And especially if you can see a band who then goes on to something bigger and right. greater. I mean, Say, it, I knew him when. It makes yeah. you a fan early on, for yeah. sure. Yeah. yeah. So I asked her, how'd she come up with this? How did this even start? So when I started to do the series, I lived in West Village. So I, went, I really thought that was a really good space to create music, a platform that invited musicians in that area. So I wanted to also tailor a project to the area as well. And I had a roommate who really liked the idea of what I was doing. And um, we were recording inside consistently for months. And once it got warm, he really wanted to take the, the series outside of the house and volunteer to build a stage. I agreed and created a platform to record outside and to include the community as well. It's funny how these things start so modestly. I it's know. like let's eh, have a few friends. Let's the air conditioning in. was broken. That's how right. this concert right. series right. started. Right, let's go outside. Right, hey, we're out of beer. Let's see. You know, <laughs> right, right. I think that's how Woodstock started. <laughs> Something like that. So yeah, uh, she knows a lot of musicians just personally, but I, I said, you know, where did you kind of initially go? How did you find the musicians that would be wanting to do this sort of thing? Right. The Untitled Bottega was a space haven for underground artists, 
musicians, rappers, um, singers, people that you know today started from the Untitled Bottega. So I started to begin to write my list of artists that I really love just watching their open mics, the you know, the concerts that they had there, the art openings that they had with performances as well. So um, I got into that that realm and scene, and i really just been following those artists since. And I really wanted to honor them in a way of kind of saying, I see your work, I see your consistency, and I want to give you a platform. I always wanted to hang out in the cool spot where like all the artists are before they become the big household names, you know? Well, now you can. Now, now you right, can. now we can. Now we you know can where it is. go to the Firehouse Music Series events. Is there, a, like, a secret knock? Do I... Like, <laughs> no, it's it's open, it's open. So their next one is coming right up Sunday, March uh, March 18th. Um, it's at a secret location. So oh, you, so there is a secret, secret to it, yeah. <laughs> so you have that What's element of surprise, but she's actually going to tell you. So, oh, okay. so you can uh, buy your ticket, and then 24 hours before, you'll get a notification where it is. But it's in uh, the Metro Detroit area and I think it's only like ten dollars something like that you can get tickets through Eventbrite but to find out more about all of this the whole project including the events um, you can just follow Firehouse Music Series on Facebook great Facebook page there's um, Instagram and a link to tickets there and you can look at all the past performances that uh, Blair has worked on oh you on. can you yeah. can still see them yeah so that's that's kind of the point too that you have this lasting video of some of these great local bands so you can go on YouTube. Again, the best way to look is on Facebook, um, Firehouse Music Series, and you can link from there to get all this good stuff. Oh, that's awesome. Mm -hmm. All right, in just a few minutes, we're going to talk about what everybody did last week. And I know you, you're like the music head, because you went to that. I was, it was all music, all Saturday and Sunday. You went to the women and hip hop thing. uh, We're going to find out all about it. I want to hear how this was. The D3. The D3. Sports Report. Mike, what's going on in the world of sports? Well, the Pistons, they're clocking some serious frequent flyer miles. Uh, This week, they're heading out west for a pretty hectic six-game road trip. Uh, They're taking on the Denver Nuggets, the Portland Trailblazers, Sacramento Kings, and Phoenix Suns, all out west there. Uh, Our beloved Red Wings, uh, they're out of town too this week against the LA Kings, Anaheim Ducks, and Colorado Avalanche before they return home to take on the Philadelphia Flyers. And the reason why both the Pistons and the Red Wings are out of town is because the big NCAA basketball tournament starts this week. This week. And Detroit is a site for the first round. That's a big deal, right? Yeah, it's a huge deal. Mm -hmm. Huge deal. Uh, Both the uh, Michigan State Spartans and the Wolverines, Michigan Wolverines, they both made it in. Uh, The Spartans landed the number three seed in the Midwest region, which means they'll be playing in Detroit at the Hara. The Hot and Ready Arena. It's yeah. called a Hara Becky. It's <laughs> get over it. it. I'm not gonna. Be, I can't get past it. <laughs> okay. All right. We'll, we'll discuss that later. Uh, so it's basically a home game for right. you of, uh, for MSU. If they win, then they'll end up playing their first two games in the tournament in Detroit at home. Basically, uh, the first game they take on a 16th seed in the tournament, Bucknell Bison. You know where Bucknell is, right? No. Uh, Syria? It's over that way. Uh, and that <laughs> game is Friday night. Uh, the Michigan Wolverines, they also landed a number three seed in the NCAA tournament. And they were hoping to play in Detroit, but you can't have two number three seeds in the same region. Duh. So, of course. So the Wolverines, they're headed to sunny Wichita in the <laughs> West region. Is it sunny there? Eventually. I, just, I don't know. So that's what's happening with them. Uh, also, also, um, NCAA tournament, like I said, starting this week, uh, they have a playing game on Wednesday, but the uh, official tournament starts, 64 teams, starts on Thursday night, right? Betting for the NCAA tournament, the brackets. Yes. Do you bet on this? Do you? I jump in and out. I jump in and out. I'm, I'm not doing it this year. But I, I have in the past. What, what does that mean that you jump in? You mean some years you sometimes spend money I do, in it? sometimes I don't. All right, but not, but not serious money. No, I'm not serious. Peggy, but I know people that you? put serious money in. Heck no. Yeah, yeah. I'm not. Uh, I'm keeping the money I earn. Um, yeah, I know oh, people that put serious money. I'm not money keeping on it. This. I'm just wasting it on other things. On your house, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Peep this: the money spent, estimated to be spent on an NCAA tournament, right this year. Yes. $10 billion. Wow. What? $10 billion, with a B. 
<laughs> and that's according to American Gaming Association. And only 3% of that $10 billion is legal money. I was going to say, did 3% they even know? is yeah. legal? 3% is legal. You know how many awesome. potholes you could fix for $10 billion? Oh, that's what we should do with that. Yeah. But why do that when you could bet on the Bucknell Bison? <laughs> uh, one of the bets should be, where's Bucknell uh, bison. And their bison. Um, can you name it on the map? Right, exactly. <laughs> but peep this: the productivity lost from all the businesses. <laughs> yes, that's even that's an even oh. bigger number. Uh, not an even bigger number, but it's a big number as well. Six point three billion, and that was in twenty seventeen. How do they measure I, that? Yeah, what does that mean? Uh, they measure like the hours that people on average spend filling out their brackets and, and the value updating, of their and, hours. And, right, okay. right. And the average. They come up with a mean average of the jobs. Usually, people that participate in this are people that make a lot of money i mean 10 billion being bet right. that's not by a right. bunch of walmart employees no it's like five minutes of a goldman sachs ceo time exactly right, right. Yeah, it's, uh, <laughs> all right coming up in just a few minutes we're gonna find out what's happening on stage in the theaters this is the deep brief about last week I got to admit, my last week was a bust. Uh, I've been moving into this new house, and all I've been doing has been installing like toilet paper roll holders and things <laughs> oh, like that. Wow. I, do, are you? Like, Hold on, Rick. How many? How many toilet plungers do you have now? I, three. <laughs> Three um, toilet plungers. Kid, no, that's not true. I about it's this. it's and a, only two it, toilet plungers. It is only two, two toilets rather. No, I got three toilets, but like okay. you know, you fancy man. No, ah. it's not me. I didn't buy the three. It was the <laughs> girlfriend bought them, and I'm like, look. You know, you unclog one before you use another. Like, I don't know why you need three plungers. One plunger. What you saying? Who's running through your house just clogging the toilets? I don't want to know. <laughs> like the toilet bandit. <laughs> right. something, right? I don't like the direction this is <laughs> let's, going. Let's talk about what you guys did last week. Uh, let's, please. <laughs> all right, Becky, what'd you do last week? So, I had all music all weekend, so I saw Miguel on Friday. And oh, yeah, you was were all excited phenomenal. about that. Phenomenal. Mm. This is I the was, guy yeah. from the Olympics without the shirt, Not, right? no. And I was way up close and it was just super duper good. But did you throw your bra on stage? <laughs> I did not. She threw mine. Classy ladies. Which is why don't. he got injured. Classy what? ladies don't do that. What did you throw on stage? None of your business. <laughs> <laughs> so anyway, you remember we had Piper Carter, Mahogany mm-hmm. yes. Jones. Yeah, they were great. So I went to see them, the the event they were telling us about, the women, the, the in, women hip-hop. in hip-hop. Yeah. You guys, it was, I said it was my church, not just for that day, but for the month. Like, it was so uplifting and spiritual and empowering, and just the energy in that room was, it was great. So set the scene for us. Where was this? It and was what at happened? the Charles Wright Museum yep. in um, the little theater in there. So it's kind of um, a arc. Yeah. Of seating. And so you, you really feel immersed in it. This is where they do the Secret Society Twisted Story. Exactly. Covers, right? yeah, 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 okay. yeah, yeah. I know the theater. Yeah. So you know the stage. And they had just great graphics and they had everything um, ran the gamut. So they had girls in high school, up through seasoned professionals, women in hip hop, MCs, singers, um, rappers. And the energy was the same for everyone, wow. from the 16-year-old girl going up on stage for the first time to Mahogany, who headlined the whole thing. The love in there, just for everyone getting up on stage, was so, so special. Yeah, I saw some of Mahogany's videos, oh. man. It was, pretty, it was pretty dope. I'm sorry I missed it. I feel bad about that. It was really great. And so you can get a lot of Mahogany's um Work, you know, she's on iTunes and all that kind of thing. Um, but her delivery live is just so something to see. Wow, yeah, yeah, I wish I'd seen that. I had a toilet, uh, toilet <laughs> yeah. apparently, you had an issue. Yeah, so I, I would just encourage plungers, you huh? <laughs> stop talking about plungers and look up women. In hip- no, the yes. We Found Hip Hop Foundation. So, you guys follow this because this is going to be big. So, this was their debut performance. You're going to want to go to other stuff. And I have on. iTunes, so I'm going to definitely look her look up. Her and up. get my daughter, my nine-year-old. We share uh, uh, Apple Music. Yeah. So I'll have her get Some that as well. Some great stuff. Uh, very cool. Yeah. What about you, Mike? Well, sir, uh, besides my usual John around the country telling jokes, um, I sat down and I watched a, a movie we discussed last week, uh, Flint Town. Yeah, this is a Netflix, on Netflix, right? Yes. How was that? Yes, it's a, a series about uh, uh, the city of Flint, Michigan, and uh, all of the troubles that they that they were dealing with, uh, and it took place right around the time of the uh, water crisis, the Flint water crisis, and um, it really focuses more on the police and how 
they have to deal with a city that was already in crisis with with uh, with a high murder rate and crime rate and all, and now you throw in the fact that they have poisoned water. So the people don't trust the police, didn't trust the police already. Now they don't trust the city government. And the police have to, they're basically the go-between, between the city government and the people. And they're getting hammered eight ways from Sunday. It, it's it's intense, man. So how does that intersect, the water and the police? I mean, it's not like the police are getting calls saying my my water is poisonous, is it? Or? No, but what happens is if you have people that are already feeling despair, right, mm-hmm. and now this happens, right. they don't trust anyone. anybody. So yeah. that just made the police uh, job even harder. Uh, and at the beginning of the series, they actually uh, have a transition. It, it starts at the transitioning of uh, the old mayor, old police chief, with the new mayor and new police chief. And... Um, and they were going at it to try to clean up the crime, to try to build trust uh, with the city and, and take on the government. And uh, it was still – most of the citizens just didn't care. So now you have this apathy that's just blanketed the city. And the police are trying their hardest to, to clean up the crime and, and improve things in the city. But you also have the city council who isn't helping the police – out, you know, funding the police and helping them get more people, uh, more policemen on staff. It, it's crazy, but it, it's it's a it's usually what happens in in an urban city, predominantly black city, uh, or an urban situation where the city council fights against uh, the mayor and and the police often or police fire. They're often caught in the middle of it. It, it's 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 intense. It's very intense. All right, so Flint Town. So we got to check that out. Yeah, absolutely. Check it out. It's like eight episodes. It's real, like forty five minutes, fifty minutes each. Speaking of which, there was some celebrity news when it came to the Flint water crisis, right? Yeah, Jaden and Will Smith. You know Will Smith. Yeah, Fresh Prince. Of course, we yeah. Do. Yeah. Well, he has this uh, upstart uh, eco friendly water company called Just J U S T, and they both donated ninety two hundred bottles of water uh, to the city of Flint. Just donated it. Boom. Off the rip a couple oh, days that's ago. that's cool. Yeah, man. Will Smith, listen, if you want to have a happy life, follow Will Smith on Instagram. Watch his videos on YouTube. The guy exudes happiness. It, it, he just puts you in a good mood. He does. Positivity. Yeah, you know what, dude? I, I heard Jaden asked him for Adidas and Will bought him zips. That's just what I heard. Hey, man, parents just don't understand. No, they don't. <laughs> All right, coming up in a minute. That's a good one. That's a good one. <laughs> I thought that deserved a better first response I like, than first that. First, I was like, where is he going with that? Then I was like, ah. That was it. Seth, you, you're dope. Gee, I, you know, <laughs> I was trying to show my credibility sneaky. there. <laughs> uh, coming up in, in just a moment, speaking of uh, uh, women running the world, we're going to talk about a play that's happening at Planet Ant in which women run the world. This is the Deep Breathe. On stage. Becky, let's take a look at the theaters. Sure thing. Uh, Detroit Public Theater on Thursday, March 15th has a fundraiser called Unabashed Ass for the Cash Bash. At the Max and Marjorie... Wait, say that again. Ah, no. Faster. (laughs) (laughs) Unabashed Ass for the Cash Bash. What? Wait. Oh, that's nice. (laughs) Now we got a bleep and censor and all signs. Aye, 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 aye. At the Max and Marjorie Fisher Music Center... Uh, it honors members of the DSO. Check that out. Uh, the Fox has two nights, March 16th, Friday, and Saturday, March 17th, Stomp. I want to see this. I've never so seen cool. this. So cool. Oh, it's so cool. This is where they dance with like the trash cans and mm-hmm. the barrels and all yes, that. Yes, that exactly. Cool. Uh, Jazz Cafe at the Music Hall has the Ladies First Poetry Slam on Friday night, March 16th. Uh, the DIA has the Mesner Puppet Theater presents the Stinky Cheese Man on March 18th, which is Sunday. On Friday, the 16th of March, the Secret Society of Twisted Storytellers has a new one, uh, Justice and Grace. Also, coming up, Sunday, March 18th, the Rockin' Road to Dublin, which is new generation of Irish dance at the Masonic Temple. Detroit Repertory Theater, Dauphin Island has its closing weekend. Fisher Theaters featuring Cinderella. Open Book Theater in Wyandotte, Vanya and Sonia and Masha and Spike, closing weekend. The Ringwald Theater in Ferndale, Merrily We Roll Along, is closing this weekend. And then, like you said, Planet Ant. It's the opening weekend for Who Run the World. Yeah, I sat down with the director. We'll talk later. We'll talk later on that. So, a couple of other fun events. On March 15th, 
The Michigan Science Center runs these third Thursday after dark events for yeah. adults. I've yeah. been to these. These are cool. It's pretty sweet. And they you, have a different theme. Have you been to these, Mike? No, I have not. Oh, this is if this is the way to go. If you want to go see the Michigan Science Center as an adult, they have cocktails in they there. Do. They got a bar. Like it's a great way to go. Yeah, see but it. then I'll be touching a Tesla ball, and it, it'll be ugly. Ah, uh, <laughs> okay. <laughs> All right. Put well, my mouth on it and just watch that little <laughs> electro. I just don't know. But this Thursday is Blacklight Dodgeball. Nice. So, different kind of balls. Um, <laughs> March 17th, the Beacon Park, um, St. Patrick's Day celebration all day long. There's a food truck rally starting at 11 a.m., a family fun time starting at 1 p.m., and then an adult party starting at 5 p.m. And don't forget that science behind the Pixar exhibit at the Henry Ford that's closing this Have weekend. Have you been? No, I got to go oh, this weekend. You, we yeah. both went. I know. Oh, Pixar and is time's dope. just getting away, so got to see it this weekend. No, for yeah, sure. you got to go. We had them on. We talked to them, and it, that exhibit is absolutely amazing. so. Before Sunday, got to yeah. make it happen. All right, just a few minutes, we'll find out what's going on with stand-up comedy around the Detroit area. This is this is the deep. This is the deep breathe. This is the deep breathe. Mike, Becky, you guys uh, know about uh, Planet Ant over in Hamtramck, sure, right? sure. Yes, sir. Have you have you been there? Have you performed there? Have you done anything? I there? have performed at the, um, uh, not in the main room, but in the, they have like a little stage room in it where there's the a bar. The Black Box Theater, right? Yeah, there you go. Yes, yeah, right. So I performed in there. I took a uh, clowning workshop there. Back to the clown. Squeeze me. Uh, yeah, <laughs> I did. It was It was interesting. I learned how to, to to do this step where you walk with a plate and then you like twist and hold the plate and so it doesn't fall. That sounds like sounds like a burlesque show. Squeeze me. Are you sure it was clowning? That kind of sounds like something different. <laughs> I'm never going to a burlesque <laughs> show with you. <laughs> They just told you it was clowning. She's but yeah, like, this is what clowns what you, do. What are you, like Cirque du Soleil? Yeah. You're like, this is a... <laughs> well, okay. Why is everybody getting naked well, like, here? Sir, <laughs> <laughs> Seth du Soleil. Seth du Soleil. Oh. <laughs> anyway, when I think of Planet Ant, I think of improv, because that's mostly what yeah. they do there, sure. right? But it turns out that they also do some uh, some scripted shows as well, and they've got one coming up. It's opening this weekend. You mentioned it earlier. Uh, it's mm-hmm. uh, called uh, uh, Who Run the World? Girls. <laughs> You're just going to do that every time I say that, aren't you? I, I just don't want people to think it is me doing it. You know? <laughs> yeah, I'm sure they're with I don't think they confuse. Girls. I don't think they confuse our voices very often. <laughs> uh, so they've got this show. It's called Who Run the World? And I sat down with the director, who's uh, Lauren Vickers, uh, and asked her a little bit about it. But before I even got into the show, uh, I wanted her to tell me a little bit about Planet Ant. So I said, you know, What's the story with this place? Well, we started as a black box theater, uh, and we do original comedies. We also do, uh, you know, scripted works. We do improv. Um, we now have expanded in the past year uh, over across the street, so we now have the Ant Hall. So there's a, there's a whole variety. There's so much going on. Yeah, so they've actually got a couple of buildings over there, uh, and you'll know it if you see it because they've got this big purple ant icon up on oh, the side sure. of the building. Okay. Yeah, You know what mm-hmm. I'm talking about? Mm-hmm. Right, yeah. yeah, that's over there. So I asked Lauren a little bit about the history of Planet Ant. The Planet Ant started out as a coffee house. We've been doing uh, improv for around 20 years, and it's the longest continuously running improv show in Detroit. And uh, it runs uh, on Monday nights, and now we do improv on Thursday nights, where we have a farm team, and we have a variety of shows. 20 years of continuous improv. That's pretty amazing. That's a lot of improv. That is a lot of improv. That's like yes and, a yes and. That's an yes impossible and, yes amount. Yes and, right. Yes. Of Just, improv. Uh, you think they get tired after a while. <laughs> <laughs> An improbable amount of improv. <laughs> <laughs> so they've got this show coming up. It's called Who Runs the World? Carols. <laughs> and I asked her what it was all about. Who Runs the World is a is an original comedy written by uh, some members of the home team and some members of the improv community uh, that have been brought together to write this script. And it is about a female-dominated future society where toxic masculinity has literally gone underground. The men uh, live in caves and the women are above ground. It's set in the year 2040. And we get to watch the cabinet that are the leaders of this society. It, it kind of sounds like my Bro. house. That's what I'm saying. Men have men caves, man caves. Yeah, so, right. yeah we've already been driven under. Yeah, so we? yeah. yes, we've been beaten back. Oh, <laughs> <We're>, please. <laughs> gets, we know our roles. It gets worse by the year 2040. So <laughs> by the year 2040. 
This reminds me of the what, what's the movie uh, Idiocracy? Is, yes, is kind of what it reminds. I, well, that that sounds horrible. I know, I was say. <laughs> just a bit part. Just yeah, a bit part. Yeah, it reminds just, me of Idiots as well. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Uh, but yeah, the, it's collaboratively written, so I guess they all got together and they they knew basically what it was about. But they started creating characters and putting together all the plot points. Uh, and so I asked Lauren. I said, you know, tell me why should go, people go out and see the show? Here's what she said: You should come out to see the show because women in comedy. There's so many coming up right now, and these are five. Uh, of the top women in the area and they're hilarious and there's one guy that gets dominated by them all. No, <laughs> no, no uh, you know, it, it's, it's a show for men and women uh, and the experience here at the Ant is just, it, it's not like any other. You know, you come in and you feel like you are part of the show. You know, Becky, we got to get you on stage doing comedy. Oh, Ooh, just, that would be that would be way dope. Oh, you should do it. Well, Becky, no, I don't Becky. know. I would need some serious coaching. <laughs> would, would, would I'll you help do, you out. Would you do improv or would you do stand up if if you had your if choice? I, oh my god, it's like the lesser of two evils. Um, I don't think I could think quickly on my feet for improv, so I'd have to do stand up so or I could stand-up. prepare some things. You can have yeah. Mike write some jokes. Yes, yeah, I'll write some yes. jokes for you. Sure. Okay. <laughs> knock knock. No, I'm just. Gonna. All right. Well, the show is Who Run the World. It is playing at Planet Ant this weekend. Uh, you can go to planetant.com for more info. Who Run the World? Girls. Coming up, we're going to talk to movie man Greg Russell. Stick around. Welcome to the D. Free D. D. Free. Funny stuff. Mike, let's talk about stand-up comedy. Already then, this Thursday at Sellerman's, uh, they're bringing in comedian Sean Patton. Uh, you may have seen him on At Midnight, and uh, he had a, a half-hour comedy special on Comedy Central, and he's also been on Late Night with Jimmy Fallon, so you can go check him out on Thursday. On Friday, at Big Tommy's Comedy Club in Novi, Detroit's own, the legendary Mike Bonner. He'll be there Friday and Saturday night at Andiamo and Warren on Friday night. Uh, you can see the Dice Man. Andrew Dice Clay. Oh, hey, oh, oh, forget about. No, I don't know what he. I don't know what he does. I forgot. But I, he'll be there at Andiamo. I haven't Warren. heard that name in a long time. Yeah, he, he's been out there hustling, man. Does he? Yeah. I mean, has he has he changed? Because he was kind of a shock comedian, right. Back in the day, I mean, he would just. And, and I wonder how that plays in this day and age. I mean, especially right. you know with right. Me Too and everything going on, can he still? I don't think the people that would go see Andrew Dice Clay uh, are Me Too big Me Too support. Yeah. Probably saying. not woke. Yes, probably not. I'm just saying. Um, at the Casino Windsor, over in Windsor, in another country, Letter Kenny Live. Now, Letter Kenny is a wildly popular show over in uh, Canada, and they're bringing their unique show to the Windsor, Casino Windsor. That's awesome. Uh, also, this weekend, Canadian comedian Deborah Di Giovanni. She's called the best comedian to see after a messy breakup. Which makes me want to run out and break up with someone. Uh, she'll be at Mark Ridley's Comedy Castle in Royal Oak. Don't break so, up with us, Mike. Yeah, no. I've never, never. <laughs> but if I did, I would be at Mark Ridley's Comedy Castle checking out Deborah D. Giovanni. Right. Uh, at the Ann Arbor Comedy Showcase, Karen Rontkowski. Uh, she's been on Letterman, Comics Unleashed. Uh, her jokes are featured in a line of greedy cards sold at Target. Wait, I thought that was awesome. Really? Wait, yes, no way. that's actually in the bio. Yes, that's awesome. How do you get your How do you get your jokes in a? You got to do that, man. Yes, roses are red, violets are purple. Uh, yes. I'm waiting. I'm thinking something with Nerful. But anyway. (laughs) uh, I want to see where that went. I don't think Target will buy that. (laughs) It's not Uh, so easy. (laughs) Roses are red. Uh, Roses are red. Violets are green. The ocean is teal. (laughs) (laughs) Babies, you knows my loves be real. Or something. I don't know. That was off the top of my dome. Like Jay-Z. Oh. No way. You didn't think of that a long time ago? Over. He's freestyling. Greedy <laughs> You're right. Wow. I'm hot on the mic, yo. Uh, at Punchline Comedy Lounge in Southfield, comedy legend Rodney Perry, he'll be there Thursday through Sunday. You got four days to watch him. And at the Holly Hotel, Brent Turdhume with Wes Ward. Good friend of mine, Wes Ward. They'll both be at the Holly Hotel. And that is Friday and Saturday evening. All right, a bunch of movies coming to the theaters near you, and we're going to talk about them along with Greg Russell. This is the D. Breeze. All right, Mike and Becky, we have our first ever 
repeat guest here on the debrief. Friend of the show. Friend of the show. Right. I think you Our first friend of the show. <laughs> not, not, a, not a repeat not for guest me, for you, but, I guess. Uh, but that's exciting. Just the whole benchmark milestone. Uh, we are very happy to have him back. It is movie reviewer and celebrity interviewer Greg Russell. Uh, you, Greg, welcome back. It's thank you. Thank you, you so much. Glad to be here and glad to know that I'm the first repeat visitor. This goes on the resume. Exactly. Yeah. Hey. They can never take that away that's from right. you. That's right. It's always best to be the first. Because whoever follows is just following. Exactly. Yeah, so, in your next interview, you should bring that up. That's you should, right. should. Well, let's talk well, about let's talk here. about your resume for a second, because this is quite a resume. You are a uh, movie reviewer and celebrity mm-hmm. interviewer for Live on the D on WDIV. Right. Uh, you also have Movie Show Plus, which airs statewide, both in Michigan and in Indiana, on the Comcast CN network. Right. Uh, <laughs> I was at your event. Last yeah. month, this event that you're doing, this Wine and Recline over at Imagine Royal Oak, we'll talk about that in just a sec. Plus, you just told us that you are taking over uh, your brother's time slot on 9, 10 a.m. That's right. Uh, some of you out there, especially uh, those of you in the state of Michigan, my brother was Cliff Russell, and he was a tremendous broadcaster as well as um, you know barrier breaker throughout his career. I mean, he was the first African-American uh, publicity director for Major League Baseball with the Detroit Tigers, and also the first African-American um, uh, b- b- publicity person for the mayor, Mayor Dennis Archer's uh, per- first person. Oh. And yeah, he did it all, and unfortunately, we lost him two weeks ago. He uh, had a heart attack, which is kind of a bummer because he was a guy who was nothing but heart. Yeah. And then, you know, to die of a heart attack. Yeah. Our condolences, by the yeah, way. Thank you. Thank you all so very much. That. Did you two, how close in, were you in age? Oh, very close. Okay. Like about a year apart. So So you, you two oh. grew up together. Oh, yeah. Even though he grew quicker than me, uh, Cliff was 6'4", <laughs> <Cliff was six, laughs> and I'm 5'6", on, you know, he just those took good all days. Right, right, right. Yeah. right. If the wind's blowing the right way, I'm about five foot six and a half. Oh, wow. <laughs> was it a surprise that you both went into broadcasting now? It kind of was, because... I know Cliff enjoyed it, but Cliff was also a tremendous athlete. Um, he went to Roper City and Country School here in uh, Bloomfield Hills uh, for high school. He received an athletic scholarship there. And the reason why I point that out is because, yeah, he was a great basketball player and football player. But no matter what, even to get into Roper, you still have to be smart. Absolutely. You know, they they yeah, weren't like the, oh, yeah, come on in. Can't spell your name? That's all right. We'll do it for you. But, no, Cliff was you know very, very smart. Uh, he then received a basketball scholarship to the University of Texas, El Paso. And that was the year after they had won the national championship. Uh, oh, down there. wow. Yeah. That's impressive. And wow. played there a couple of years and came back to Wayne State, played here, and then somehow or another got into uh, c- the communication studies field at Wayne State while I was at the University of Detroit. And so we both graduated uh, pretty much around the same time. And ironically, when we were talking even off mic, we both started at WJR. For some reason, I'm thinking I started just a little bit before, but it was that same year. I was on WJRFM. The home of beautiful music. <laughs> and this is how we all had to sound. Hi, Becky. Do you want to hear Montevani? Yes, I do. <laughs> right. If you say it that way, I do. Montevani. Yeah. Montevani. <laughs> is it hard working with a sibling? Yes and no. It, it is because, you know, like if the one does something, everybody's like, oh, did you see what great thing? And what are you? And <laughs> I'm playing music down here, but, but that was actually it. I was always, say, the DJ side, the entertainment side, and he was the news side. So we never, you know, had to say cross those paths. Right, right. So, and so tell me about what it's like taking over the, the time slot and what you're doing for, uh, you know, 910 now. It's, it's uh, very gratifying. Uh, we're calling it, you know, the legacy um, part of the show, the Russell legacy. Uh, and the main reason is kind of funny. When after he had passed and I had filled in, some of the folks even there at the station would say, oh, maybe you should, you know, do it. And I kind of thought about it a little bit, but I, I never wanted it to come across like, Oh, you're being opportunistic, you know. Hey, mm-hmm. brother, dies right. you, you know. So I didn't, you know, really think too much. But all of a sudden, I started getting phone calls at the station, and then also, it's amazing now with you know everything with the internet. The listeners of the station in that time slot got in touch with me, just saying, "No one else can fill that slot except you." And so I figured, well, if the listeners are saying that, okay, that's pretty. Then special. I'll do it. Well, you know, you know, they called us to check your references, right? Oh. They did. <laughs> so like, how many times has he been on the debrief? We're like, uh, we we kind of guessed it too. So. We put in a good word. For good, you. good. I appreciate <laughs> it. Appreciate it. <laughs> well, let's talk movies. I mean, that's what you're known for. Yeah. Uh, we got to talk about the Oscars first off. What was your take? I mean, nothing surprising in regards to the wins. I mean, if they called anyone else's name other than the four people who won for best and supporting. 
I would have fallen out of my chair. Okay, so we, we tried to get you to tell us the last time you were here who you thought, or at least who you were going to vote for. So these, the four people that won, you're, you're cool with it. Yeah, I, I like Gary Oldman. Uh, you know, he's, and also he's done so much other great work over the years. And then also when he was at our award show, the Critics' Choice Awards, he saw me and came over and talked to me at my table. So, I mean, that immediately also gives him an extra gold star. So that's a lot. So it's like... <laughs> How much of that factors in? How much of it is this role versus he's done so much great work over the years? Oh, yeah. I mean, that, that does happen where, I mean, he, he did do an excellent job. And, you know, a lot of times they do think about, okay, we've maybe passed over this person before or, you know, didn't do this person right. I wasn't sure if I'd even shared those stories before in regards to... Um, like even with Russell Crowe. Right. Remember when he won the uh, Academy Award for Gladiator? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Then the next year he was in A Beautiful Mind, which he did a, oh, a great, so great job. Right. right. But he had shot off his mouth about, you know, Hollywood and blah, 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 and not all that great, and I'm bigger, and do da 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 And so Denzel was up for training day. And so really the Academy, I mean, you know, it's not like they really did, but it's like, you know what? We're not going to give it to Russell because that would make him win it twice in a row. And only two other guys have ever done that, Spencer Tracy and Tom Hanks. Mm -hmm. And so their deal is like, no, you know what? Denzel has deserved it, especially like for Malcolm X. We're going to give it to him for training day. Ah, uh, uh, makeup call. You, yeah. <laughs> you say we like like you all discuss it together. Does that well, they, actually happen? Are they, there? Well, even like with our group, you know, it is kind of like, okay, well, who do we like? I mean, we do really go on performance. I mean, if you went up and mm-hmm. did a really bad performance, no matter how much we may like you or your mom, you're not going to win. <laughs> <laughs> but it's not like you're all casting your ballot in secret and, and everybody walks into a booth. Oh, with no, you do. You do it. It. Oh, right, you do so, it in secret. So but there are no like, discussions going on about... Oh, no, not at, at the time of voting. But a lot okay. of times, like with your friends, you get together and it's like, well, who are you going to... What do you, what do you right. think about right. you know this right. or that or something like that? Uh-huh. Wow. Uh, so, so you're happy. I, I got to say, one of my favorite movies... Uh, you know, obviously didn't win, which is Get Out. And I think a yeah. lot of people didn't know what to do with it. What was your sort of And I, I think that's that? what it was as a well. Comedy, it's man. Like, I mean, a comedy. The only comedy that's Not. ever won, per se, is Annie Hall. And that was back in the 70s. Truthfully, I think they should have another category because there have been so many what they might call great comedies that have been out before and things that people have even liked more. But, you know, a lot of times we have to act a little highbrow. You know, it's like, oh, mm-hmm. did people speak a foreign language in the movie? I'm going to have to go for that one because that right. makes me seem like I know more. Right. <laughs> so there should be, to me, a different category, you know, where comedy or maybe even also adventure, you know, just like they even came up with the one for animated features, you know, just a few right, years ago right. mm-hmm. because there were so many great animated movies. Right. So I think there should be, yeah, a different one. Because my favorite movie actually the year was The Post, which basically almost got – you know, wiped out of everything. Right. Well, I think that was too much having Hanks and Streep in the same movie. It's like, whoa, this is overload. This is like, you know, a Thanksgiving dinner of movies. But I mean, I, I kind of had a problem with the with them putting Get Out as a comedy. Why? Right. Uh, Lord knows. I mean, a lot of people did. A yeah. lot of people did. I think, uh, well, because like our group does do two, two different categories. We'd have the dramatic movie and a comedy. And same thing, I think, with the Golden Globes. So a lot of times they do it knowing that, okay, they're not going to let it win a dramatic thing. So we'll make it a comedy. Because there was something, I think The Martian, a couple of years ago, seriously, I think it was, was a comedy. Oh. Was listed as a comedy, yeah. To sort of give it a better chance yeah. of winning. Oh, and it's like, the, if that's comedic, I sure would hate to see drama. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> What's wow. the criteria? Just whatever you submitted as? Uh, yeah, I mean, you know, it's kind of like, well, you do have voting members, you know, who pick the categories, and, you know, they'll just say, okay, we're going to make this a comedy. I mean, it wasn't Jordan Peele, right. you know, who said, oh, hey, make mine a comedy or something like that. Right. So, hmm. yeah, whatever the voting members decide to do. Uh, and then uh, talk to me about The Shape of Water. I mean, what? how did you feel about that film? It was... It was a good movie. I still remember when we all first saw it. You know, we didn't know what it was about. And next thing you know, there's the creature from the Black Lagoon coming up, and the girl falls in love with him. And so, like, even they were making jokes on the Academy Award, great. Uh, Now single women are all going to be dating fish. (laughs) Right, right. (laughs) You know, hanging out at the aquarium and going, hey, it worked for her in the movie. It can work for me here. Um, But once you got to really see the movie and then begin to understand it really it as well is about tolerance it's about people all getting along because here was this young lady who was deaf or and or mute uh and you know just she couldn't communicate with everyone else and everybody at work you know was treating her bad her best friend was played by octavia spencer now this is the 1950s or early 60s so she was a black woman who she worked with so she wasn't getting any respect either right and you know then they just kind of she just kind of realized that this creature you know had feelings 
And instead of doing what a lot of folks always like to do is, you know, you capture something, let's just cut it up and see how it works. Instead of let's just become friends and see how it lives, you know, that was what her thing was. Because Michael Shannon played the perfect, as always. He's awesome. He is. He's, he is he plays awesome. crazy the best. Right, right. <laughs> so, you know, and that was his main thing. Let's just chop it open and see what's inside. <laughs> <laughs> Got some sushi right there. <laughs> I got to admit, I think I think that's why we have Becky on here, because Seth and I would probably do that. Yeah, would. Just, you would. You would definitely would. I'd yeah. be hungry. I want to, you know, can, can you make a meal out of it? Yeah. Uh, all right, Greg, stick around for a few minutes, because we also want to talk to you about Black Panther, because yes. this is obviously a, a movie that's breaking all kinds of, oh, uh, yeah. uh, you know, Big boundaries. Time. Yeah, and we want to get your take on that. So stick around. I'll be here. Action. This is the deep brief. All on the screen. All right, Mike, what's going on in the movie theaters? A couple of uh, big-ish movies opening nationally. We have Tomb Raider. Yeah, they're relaunching this. Have, yeah. you, have you talked to anybody over at... Uh... That I haven't. That I haven't. But uh, yeah, everybody I know keeps saying, why are they bringing it back? Because <laughs> still in their mind, it's going to be Angelina. Right. <laughs> right. I, but I told him, I said, well, they figured that there's a younger crowd out there right now who doesn't really know that movie. You got Alicia Vikander in it, who everybody you know likes. She's a great actress. Oh, she's awesome. And if this one takes off, Boom, they've already got two, three, four, and Seriously. five, you know, already lined up. Did the first one take off enough? Like, why Why isn't um, Angelina making more of these? I think probably now, not to sound funny, just even though she still looks great, but because of age, you yeah. know, like yeah. that. And the character herself is somebody in their early 20s. Yeah. So that's what they wanted to stick with. I understand. CGI. They could have done it. Right. Hey, they brought <laughs> Carrie Fisher back for Star Wars. I'm just they saying. Can... True. <laughs> I'm just saying. Uh, also, Love, Simon. Seems interesting. It's the story of a kid who's gay, but he hasn't come out to his family or friends, but he's falling for a mysterious classmate online. Ooh. Mm-hmm. Ooh. That sounds, that sounds pretty interesting. This is the new romantic comedy. Seriously. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, that's, yeah, that's all the it is. modern elements. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, I'm sure Tom Hanks is in that one, too. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Jennifer Garner is. <laughs> right, of course. Oh, of wow. course. Yeah, pimping uh, Capital One cards. Um, at the Main Art Theater in Royal Oak, we have Thoroughbreds, which seems pretty cool. Have you seen this movie, Greg? No, I, I haven't heard much about it, uh, but I know they gave me some great stuff that I gave away the other day, so that's pretty good. Boom. <laughs> You're already up for an Academy Award. That's right. Uh, Call Me By Your Name, Phantom Thread is still out there, a fantastic woman. And on Friday and Saturday midnight, uh, they live with Rowdy Roddy Piper. He's Whoa. fighting aliens. Woo. Yeah, that should be cool. That'd yeah. be the dramatic <laughs> I gotta, I gotta, thing. I want to go check out. By one putting of on these sunglasses, and he was able to see the aliens. It's it's wacky. It's I wanna, doodle. I want to go see one of these midnight showings. That uh, you know, this, this seems, just seems like a fun thing to do. It's this would be yeah. the one. This is the one. It's John Carpenter. F- they live. A fun yeah. crowd. You know, <laughs> right. people really get into it and mm-hmm. say the lines and. It's fun. <laughs> to Maple Theater and Kitchen in Bloomfield. We have three billboards, big Oscar winner. Oh, yeah. Uh, the Shape of Water, another big Oscar winner. Mm-hmm. Uh, Call Me By Your Name, Red Sparrow, and the uh, 19th Annual Animation Show of Shows. It's going to be there. The Detroit Film Theater at the DIA is in between Bar Bahar. It's a dramedy that follows uh, the ups and downs of three women who share an apartment in Tel Aviv. Uh, otherwise known as Three's Company in America. <laughs> um, the, the Reppert Theater has The Searchers, and that's part of their John Wayne weekend. Which, if you like John Wayne, go check out the Duke stuff. I like what the Redford Theater's been doing. They've been doing a lot yes. of these theme right. weekend things. Right. Uh, and, and it's been really cool. To, oh, know. yeah. And I also love the fact that a lot of times they'll get some of the stars or a star from one of those movies, and they fly them in. Do they really? Oh, oh yeah. yeah. Like when they did um, Revenge of the Nerds, they had Booger coming Oh, yeah. In. Yeah. And he's from here. He's yeah, from yeah. Royal he's Oak, from right? here. Yeah, so he yeah. was yeah. there. They have a room in the Redford Theater where the, the celebrities that come, they sign the wall. Ooh. And if you do a tour there, you can go see that room with all the famous Ooh, autographs. Fantastic. Nice, yeah. nice. At Cinema Detroit, they have Submission. That's uh, Stanley Tucci, stars as a professor whose relationship with the star student crosses the line. Ooh. Ooh. Tucci. Yeah, Tucci. Tucci. Stanley Tucci. Um, also, Black Panther. Well, yeah. It's going to be there. You got to. Hey, do you have any movies that are coming up that uh, you're looking forward to? Wow. It's kind of weird. I'm, I won't even lie. By doing them so much and then dealing with the stuff that goes on this week, a lot of times, honestly, future stuff is almost kind of mush. Right. In your mind, sure, it's like, sure. like what, what am I doing? Like I, like I mentioned to Becky, I don't remember what I'm really doing this weekend. 
<laughs> but I'll be, I'll be in L.A. from Wednesday to Friday doing two movies. You'll remember when you get there. That's right. So they'll all be great surprises, though. <laughs> you, need, you need an assistant to handle all I that. I do. <laughs> the D. Breathe. All right, Greg. Uh, let's talk about Black Panther. Yes. Can we? Uh, yes, we can. Because this is a hell of a movie. It's breaking all kinds of records. Mm-hmm. Uh, first of all, what did you think? I really enjoyed the movie. I mean, you know, I love superhero movies, first of all. And then I think the one, the thing that also really stuck out is it takes place in Africa, uh, but it's got these people uh, from Africa who are all very proud people, very smart people, very intelligent people. And where they're living, I mean, because even like his sister, true enough, it's a movie, but his sister is this great, you know, minded person inventing all this stuff that can cure people where it goes away from the old thing that we used to see especially in the past if there was something in Africa it was a bunch of people like running through the forts or you know through right. the jungle right. being chased by tigers right. Right. Mm-hmm. and a coke bottle falls out of the sky right. and everybody right. thinks it's a god yeah. right. 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 <laughs> like the reference <laughs> but, that is a nice call man. <laughs> but yeah this one you know, look it up kids yeah. <laughs> and also it shows you know traditional stuff like in regards to becoming like the next king and all like that you know the passages that people have to go through so yeah it was you know entertaining uh also educational and you know like i tell people it's made you know over a billion dollars now and this should be an eye-opening thing to hollywood because guess what it wasn't only black people seeing this movie absolutely (laughs) absolutely when i went yeah when i went there was like three quarters of the crowd were um uh, non people of color. Mm-hmm. You, say, we'll, you can say that, right? Yeah, sure. Uh, so, sure. Yeah, so it, it, it was it was a, an eye opening experience for me, and I saw it again yesterday. Yeah, so that's twice now, and I think I'm going to see it each month that it's out. <laughs> <laughs> I probably paid for goal. at least seven hundred million of that three. All right, but <laughs> you're in the industry. Yeah. Was there a sense that it was going to be this big, or was it a surprise? I, I think they knew it was going to be big, but I think this has turned out a lot bigger than they thought. Oh. Um, like they said, it just opened in I think it was China. Over the weekend, oh. and already made some like seventy six million dollars there, wow. and that was its opening weekend. So by the time this thing all wraps up, it probably will be Marvel's all time you know blockbuster movie. And, and that was one of the questions, right? It wasn't just whether a black movie could do this well in America, but it was also whether a, a movie with an all black cast could do this well overseas, right? Right. And right. That was a big question, right? And obviously with this one, it's it's doing well everywhere. I think it even opens on the moon, what, in two months? <laughs> and we should go catch that. Yeah, we should. Yeah. We should. Yeah. <laughs> the dark side. Talk to us a little bit about the director. Talk to us about Kugler. I actually was talking with another person about him today on the radio, and it's just such a great story. Here's a guy in his you know early 30s. This is his first movie. I mean, not first movie, but you know, he directs this movie, right, and this yeah. is a blockbuster. He is now one of the hottest commodities in Hollywood. I mean, do the math. How old would he have been when the first Iron Man came out? I mean, he, he, oh, boy. he certainly wouldn't have been making movies in Early point. 20s? Yeah. Uh, uh, younger. I know, yeah. younger. 13 yeah. Yeah. or something, maybe. Right. Teenager, yeah. Yeah. Wow. So, he, so he's been probably watching these movies as a fan. Yeah. Yeah, but if anyone time. watched his movies, if you've seen Creed mm-hmm. um, or um, uh, was that Sunny? Oh, was that Station? Oh, the uh, the Bart Station over in uh, in the and, Bay Area, right? The, um, oh, Fruitvale. Yes. Oh, okay. Fruitvale, Fruitvale Station. That, those were incredible movies. That's Fruitvale true. Station was awesome. It was an awesome movie, but Creed was surprisingly good. Right. So if you've seen his movies, you could. I'm not you surprised. See the progression, yeah. yeah. I, I think, and, and it didn't feel like. Uh, a superhero movie. We've talked about it. It just, to me, it no. didn't feel like it. Yeah. So I, I think because he came at it with uh, more emphasis on tr- the tradition right. and the story, right. I think Message. that overruled everything else. Mm-hmm. Yeah. It's just my opinion. Yeah. Well, I, I'm excited for Infinity War. Are you? Oh, I am. Yeah, that's coming out in the summer, and we'll see how that does because, like we said, uh, well, Black Panther's in that, so great. Right, right. <laughs> that'll, that'll help out. But I mean, there's so many now that uh, I mean, these are not just summer tentpole movies. I mean, no, no. I mean, that was one of the things about Black Panther was that it opened in February, right? Which is not really when you release yeah, a, a, yeah. a, a a movie this big, right? You're right. But then another surprise when you think about it, when you mentioned Get Out, it opened last year in like January or February. Yeah. Yes. But it yeah. had legs to take it all the way through the award season because you're year. right. Normally, mm-hmm. if it comes out in January or February, by June, you know, no matter how good your movie is, nobody's mm-hmm. thinking about it. Freddy versus Jason. So will this be an awards contender? <laughs> It'll probably be up for some awards. I mean, I wouldn't doubt. I mean, I'll just say special effects. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Sound, right. Costumes. Yeah, right. right. Yeah. But you don't think it'll... I mean, will a superhero movie ever? You know, 
It, it is. It's another one of those things where I wish, yeah, that sometimes they would look and go, okay, right, it was a superhero movie. It had all this action. But it also had this great story, you know, right. along with it. And, you know, sometimes look beyond because I always make the joke to folks about um, in 1975, Jaws lost the Academy Award. What movie won? Oh, 75? Uh, that wouldn't be Rocky, right? That was Rocky was seventy seven, right? I think so. Uh, so seventy five must have been. Um, um, boy, I don't know. Yeah, I don't terrible. But well, I, well, the movie that beat it was One Flew Over the Cuckoo's Nest. Oh, that, that, no. that was a good movie. It was a great oh. movie. Right. But Jaws is the first blockbuster. Right, right. 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 Everyone has seen Jaws. <laughs> right. right. Most sure. people, a lot of folks, have not seen the other one, and that's not just you know take anything away from that sure. film. Right. Well, what about Return of the King though? I mean that that I mean it's not a superhero film, but it's right. kind of the closest thing you would get to yeah. without being a superhero film. Right. In a lot of ways. Yeah. So, so I say at least put Michael B. Jordan in in there. For I, some I, I, I Michael love B. Him. Jordan was excellent in it. Really great. He was. He was. He's come a long way since he played Wallace. That's true. I, I mean, it's just like, yeah. he, you know, uh, on the wire. He is not that oh, wow. scrawny kid. No. That, no. Was, that was where I first knew. And Friday Night Lights was yeah. where I loved sure, him from, sure. too. Yes. He was great. And, and he should really be grateful because, yeah, being a Black Panther was a great payback to him from Marvel for putting him in the Fantastic Four. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> it was like, the we, we owe you one. Yes. We owe you one guy. What do you the think human they, torch. What do you think Come they're going to do with some of those? Uh, it could, because most of the Marvel stuff has been brilliant. Right. But some of it is not. not. And those were the ones that weren't part of really like the whole Marvel studio thing. Because uh, mm -hmm. Fantastic Four, I think it was a Fox yeah. product. Mm -hmm. But uh -huh. that is going to go back to them very soon. Same thing with Spider-Man. Right. It had been the same way. So, so how mm -hmm. have they been working Spider-Man in... In the meantime, because the Spider-Man has been incorporated into right and, now, yeah. Well, I think they've gotten the rights back, so that's where uh, they're you know able yeah. to put him into the um, the group, you so know, the so Avengers. The big one then is the X-Men. Do they have that? Do you know? I or are they getting think. it back? Because I, I know they, they getting. They, they haven't been able to use the word mutant, you right. notice, In any of the well, oh. but they since Logan though, right? Uh, and I'm no spoiler alerts, but since Logan, they now have a new uh, X Men movie out called The New Mutants. Uh, so, so you think it's uh, well coming out, right? So I think they'll they'll kind of put them in there. And there's a lot of behind the scenes politics. <laughs> <laughs> right, right. But yeah, once Marvel gets you know control over all of its properties again, yeah, everything is just going to be you know great. I mean, like we've even talked about before. I have to give them credit. They know how to make a movie, you know, a superhero Absolutely. movie or yeah. whatever way you want no to call question. it, how to make a movie. Hopefully DC will, you know, figure out the formula as well mm -hmm. so that, you know, their products will be out there. I mean, I still love Batman. You know, I've always loved Batman since I was 10. So, you know, you'd like to see a good Batman a good, movie. Yes, yeah. yes. yes. Yeah, same here. I'm Team Superman, and I just like, ugh. Mm -hmm. The last few, I'm just like, wop wop. Ben Affleck? No. <laughs> no. <laughs> yeah. Uh, Affleck. Mike's shirt got tight. <laughs> Affleck. <laughs> right. Uh, Greg, Greg, let's talk about wine and recline. Oh, yes. It was something we started last month. It was the very first one. Uh, kind of came up with this idea really from a year ago. We, I hosted this party for the Imagine for Bad Moms. And so <laughs> we had a wine and cheese party before the screening. And got a chance. It was a blast. Oh, it was me and all these, quote, you know, bad moms. How did I not know about that? Oh. Gosh. <laughs> well, when Bad Moms 3 comes out, okay. you're there. Yeah. <laughs> I'm going to headline that one. And these, you know, these ladies just had a ball. And I just thought, you know, this would be a good idea because the Imagine has its own screening room. It seats about, what, 36 people when you say yeah, that? So that was about like what that. was in there. And, you know, they said, hey, well, let's come up with some ideas of some mm -hmm. stuff to do. So I said, well, let's. Let's try this, and like we said, it's called Wine and Recline with Greg Russell. First movie we did was Sideways, which is one of my all-time favorite movies. Yeah, it's a great movie. So funny. Yeah. Yeah. My girlfriend had never seen it. We came oh, out, right. and, yeah, we, we saw it, yeah. So, uh, and she loved it. It was great. And it was, it was a lot of fun. Like I said, everybody had a good time, and I was so glad to see. I mean, truthfully, I think for an opening event, and that was also the same week you know, that my brother had passed, right. so a lot of folks told me that the reason they didn't come was because they thought, I might not hold the event right. Right. because of that. And I mm -hmm. told him, I said, oh, I said, no problem. But it was a, a collaboration between me and the Imagine. So there were people there who didn't necessarily didn't know. know me or mm -hmm. whatever. So, you know, and also it was good to get out of the house. I'm, I'm I sure. bet. Yeah. 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 But uh, I know you had to get a kick out of the fact that we had Merlot. 
Yes. Oh, right. <laughs> yeah, see, I thought the whole thing was it was because it was sideways that you were serving wine. Mm-hmm. So then I thought, well, what are they going to do for the next one? So it's not necessarily a themed food with the right, movie. Right. It's always wine and cheese. That's right. Okay. Wine and it. cheese go with every movie. They do. Yeah. I mean, you, right. you could be sitting on your couch at home having the same thing, but now you get to do it with That's friends right. and a group and have the fabulous you near uh, you. Yes. And, and it's nice to hear your, your sort of behind the scenes stories and yes. your yes. take on the film. Yeah. And, uh, you know, I mean, I didn't for realize. Sure. I mean, I knew that that was a small film that did better than right. people expected but yeah it was it was really cool to hear kind of the inside details about it really yeah i mean it's still it. you know people are still watching it and talking about it now 14 years later i know mm-hmm. and yeah it's it's a great movie and every time it comes on i always have to stop Right. And watch it, you know, and get a glass of wine. You're right. <laughs> it's very significant for me because that's the first movie I ever uh, received free passes for. Oh, yeah? And oh. it was either to go see that one or that one movie uh, about the guys that go to Germany for the beer. What was that Beer Fest? Oh, Actual wow. Fest? Yes. No, it's called Beer oh. Fest. Yeah. So oh, the there's movie a big was drinking beer contest, beer drinking contest. So it was either Little Miss Sunshine or Beer Fest. Like, I don't drink beer, so I went to see that. I was mm-hmm. like, oh, I'm so glad I saw it. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, little 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 thing about me. <laughs> <laughs> All right. <laughs> and then next week, I even have a special little story to tell you about in regards to awards with Little Miss Sunshine. Oh. So, you oh. find out. Just show up to wine and recline. Yes, next you need Wednesday. to come out there, so people. That's the next one. The next one is uh, on the twenty first. Correct. The twenty first at Imagine Royal Oak. At Imagine Royal Oak. Yes. Uh, and it's going to be Little Miss Sunshine. Little Miss Sunshine, because you figure you need a little sunshine right now oh, right. Yes, in your we life. Do. <laughs> well, Greg Russell, thank you so much for coming back. It's great to see you. Thank again. you so and much for having me. Yeah, man. You know, this yeah. is always so fun. fun. Yeah. Love the new edition. Thank you. <laughs> first friend of the show. <laughs> yeah, and and we'll be listening for you on the radio and. Uh, and I'd love to have you guys always. come on my radio show. That would be awesome. Oh, Oh, Come yeah. to think of it, and Kelly and cross promote. I would love yeah. that. Let us know. So, all right. Well, let us know when you're in town because I know you're. I know. <laughs> <all the> time. <laughs> you're always you know. off at these movie premieres. Right. La da da. August is looking good. All right. So okay. <laughs> put us down. We'll go with that for now. <laughs> well, thanks, Greg. Thank you so much. This is the D Detroit. This is the D Breeze. There we go, guys. Another show in the can. Man, that's how we do it, man. That that's is. how we do it. Now the the terrible three. Or the, hold on, not a no. terrible three. No. What's a good another word with a T that sounds awesome? Terrific trio. Terrific trio. How about that? Yes. Workshop it. Okay. Uh, <laughs> he doesn't like it. <laughs> you see why we brought? I was it. You see why we brought Greg Russell back, right? Oh yeah, He's I love fun. him. That's my man, yes, man. Yes, I can't wait to Big hang out with him. Big shout out to more. Greg Russell. He's mm-hmm. a good dude. All right, thank you to Greg Russell for stopping by. Go check out his event, uh, uh, Wine and Recline. I'm there. Let's go see it. The uh, movie next week is uh, Little Miss Sunshine, which I've never seen. No. Yeah, oh. this is the Steve Carell film, right? Yes. Yes, yeah. it's really good. And it's it's a great way to see it. You get wine, you get cheese, you get to hang out, you get to talk. Small group. Yeah, movies with yeah, because it's 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 an intimate setting. That room up there, I, I didn't it. even know these. They had these rooms up either. there in Imagine Royal Oak. But yeah, a lot yeah. of events go on up there. Yeah. yeah, there's only you know like 30, 40 seats in the room. It's a it's a nice setting. Uh, so go check that out. Also, thank you to Lauren Vickers, the director of Who Run the World. Girl. At Planet Ants, that's opening this week. That's probably getting old. <laughs> Girls. Nah, yeah, that's give see. it, give that's it another 17 more times. Oh, okay. Uh, I also, Stephanie Blair Watts, uh, better known as Batty Blair. Batty Blair. Uh, of, of the Firehouse Music Series. Thank you to her. Thanks to Jag and our intern, Spencer, as well. Mike, you got some shows coming up? Listen, man, I have so many shows, it doesn't even make any sense to list them all. Seriously. Uh, St. Patrick's Day. Where are you, St. Patrick's Day? St. Patrick's Day, I am in... Uh, I'm in Novi at Big Tommy's Comedy Club with Mike Bonner. Nice. Yeah, 10.30 show, late show, late show. Friday, I'm in Birmingham. uh, Actually, in two places. I start out in Livonia, Michigan at uh, the Token Lounge. I'm opening up for uh, Ron Jeremy, uh, movie legend. The Ron Jeremy, the movie really? legend. We'll just say he's a movie legend. Uh, uh, yeah. <laughs> Look him up on IMDb later. Yes, You'll find it. Ron oh, Jeremy. I know who he is. So, <laughs> <laughs> so I'm opening up for him in uh, Livonia at the Token Lounge. Uh, and then you can catch me in Birmingham a short while later as I will go over there for my show, MikeJeter.com presents uh, Comedy at the Elm Room at Vinoteca, formerly the Bird and the Bread. Vinoteca. Uh, my main man, Dave Landau. He's oh, going to be there. He's a funny dude. I saw yes. him on Valentine's he's Day. He's headlining my show, man. I've never seen Ron Jeremy. I mean, not, well, I've never seen him tell jokes. Yes. <laughs> right. <laughs> I wonder. <laughs> what about, what about you, Ben? Ah, 
<laughs> what about you, Becky? Tours, tours. Um, yeah, you, you got feet on the street there. Where feet are you, on the street uh, tours. Well, you know, our specialty is private tours, so call us up. Uh, we don't have any public tours this week, but lots of private tours. We are booking up the whole schedule. So if you want something in spring or summer, give us a call. What's uh, the number? 313-393-2055. Or email at info at enjoy the D.com. You guys should get together. Maybe you could do a private tour with Ron Jeremy. <laughs> that oh. sounds terrific. All right. Yeah, uh. yeah. Amazing. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, our website is thedebriefdetroit.com. While you're there, join the email list. Every week, we will send you a list of everything that's going on in the Detroit area. Also, you can find this podcast wherever you find your favorite podcast, whether it's Apple Podcasts, Google Play Music, Spotify, Our iHeart. app. Uh, yes, we've got an app uh, as well. Download the mobile app. We've got it for iOS and for Android. If you do subscribe to the app, uh, excuse me, subscribe to the podcast, do us a favor, leave a review that helps other people find the show. Also, if you put on events and you want us to know about it, you can send your announcements to press, P-R-E-S-S, at thedebriefdetroit.com. And uh, until next week, hey, thanks, guys. It's been a lot of fun. Yeah, we'll see you. Over and out. The D. Brave. Your guide to Detroit's arts and entertainment scene.